this is Lisa with Quilting Block of the Month Facebook group and we are going to release some more blocks since we rushed our blocks once a week uh, during COVID. Uh, so we've got some more blocks to keep the year going on. They're all again from 101 Patchwork Patterns by Ruby McKim. This block here is called Draw Peter to Pay Paul, uh, which is real fun. It does have curves. But as you can see, you kind of have a little circle here. And if you put a whole bunch of these together, you would see additional circles as you're looking at it. So because this is cut on circles, we are going to do the traditional way that they did it um, back then. And that is by using a template. So you will need to print this template out. Um, there are two pieces on it. Piece A, which are these side pieces here. Piece B, which is your center pieces here. So you'll just cut, print this out. Again, making sure that your one inch square is actually one inches. If it's smaller or bigger, then your square is not going to measure up correctly. So we basically will be doing this block in four sections. So we'll do two identical in this coat, two identical in this. Each one of these corner pieces of squares will measure six inches. And a half inches by six and a half inches before they're sewn together to complete a 12 and a half inch unfinished block which will finish your quilt at 12 inches so I do recommend that you do have a ruler that is at least six and a half inches by six and a half so that as you put them together you can make sure that they are the correct size so that your block pull, folds together correctly so first thing you're going to do after you cut your pieces out is you're going to need to do, if you're doing a two color scheme like this, you're going to need to cut out eight pieces of each color in the piece A. So you have eight yellow in my case and eight teal. And then you're going to need two of piece B out of each color. So I have two teals and two yellows. Um, you could do this in four different colors and have all four of these different. You could even do these where you're doing four pieces um, of one color, and so you have four different colors. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to start and we're going to assemble this corner block here with the, middle, the teal in the middle and the yellow on the outside. So what you're going to need to do is get each other pieces out of the way, and you're going to need four of piece A. So they're basically going to go together like this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just take your pieces here on the side and finger press them on the curved side at halfway. Because the best way to sew a curve is always to start with the middle and stitch out and then the middle and stitch out. So if we do all four pieces like this and press them. And you just need to do a little finger press just so that you can see it because it's just temporary while you're putting the, it together. Then you're going to take your center piece here, piece B, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fold it in half, match it up, and you're going to want to press these outside edges here. You don't have to press it all the way across unless you want to, but press them out. So you've got two little there, then fold it the opposite direction. Fold it and again just kind of finger press it there then you open it up and so you've got your four center marks here now as you do press along the way because we'll do one side at a time you may have to repress these or you could just get a little pin and just put a little tiny mark on the edge there just so that you know which would be in the seam allowance just so you've got it um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take one piece and we are just going to ma match it up at that center point. Now I do recommend using pins to hold it together versus using the clips just because the pins to me hold a little more accurate. So what you're going to do is you're just going to go from the middle and you're going to go outward and you are just going to match the seam up 
and just put your pins and then just continue all the way around how close you put them together is completely up to you whatever you feel more comfortable one of my testers she thought it was easier to do it without the pins kind of depends now you're going to flip it over and then you're going to match the opposite side and then just keep pinning it on around And just pin however you're comfortable. The reasoning for putting it like this is you're going to sit at your machine and you're going to start from the center and you're going to stitch out. And if you're like me, I'll be stitching here and I'll go all the way out this direction. Well, instead of trying to sew this way, you can flip it over, start in your center, and stitch your way out this direction. It's always best on a curve to start in the center and work your way out because you are stitching on bias and the fabric does pull. And if you start here, you may end up with a clear out sticking out over the end and then your piece is offset or you may not have enough. So it's always best to start with the middle. Sew one way, flip it over, and then stitch the other direction. And I will show you how I do that on the machine. Okay, so now I'm at my machine. And as you can see, I've got the pins on one side here. And again, if you flip it over on the other half on this side. Because as I'm going to go along here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to stitch out. And then I'm going to pull these pins out as I stitch along because I don't want to stitch on the pin. So, just line it up, kind of about in the middle point. And you're going to want to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way across. So, we'll just start and just take it as slow as you need. And then you're going to flip it over to the other side. And so you've got your seam over here. Now what you're going to want to do is want to go do a few stitches over the other stitching so that it kind of locks that thread. And so we'll just start there. Oops, it's to be on the other side to get it out. And we'll just go around. And as I come to those pins, just going to get them pulled out. Again, sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Oops. And then just get to the end. And then you'll take it out. Okay, so now that you've finished sewing that piece on, go ahead and press it out. The best way to do is to press it towards piece A just because of the way the curve goes, so you don't have to do snipping of the curve. It'll just fold easier in. So now what you're going to do is you're going to match up the opposite piece to the center. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to get a match up the middles, pin it, pin it all the way around one side, flip it, pin the other side, just like you did on this piece here. And then you're going to sew it. And then you're going to have a piece that is like this. So now you've got part of your block done. Now is a good time to be checking your seam allowances. Um, it's best to do one block, make sure everything works together smooth, that your seams are done correct, and then continue on. So this is where you can take your ruler, find your six and a half inch line, line it up over here on this side here, then look over here to the other side. My six and a half inch, I got just a little bit hanging over the edge here, but that's okay, I can trim up the block when we finish sewing it all together, this piece together. So now that that is six and a half, if it's too big or too small, you can adjust your seam allowances. And it's better to do it now before you've sewn all these curves and realize your seams are off. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the basically the same thing. You're gonna attach one of the sides here, stitch it, then attach the other side and stitch it, and then you'll have your first quarter done. And then what we're going to do is we will make sure that all of our seam allowances, again, are still smooth by measuring it. Okay, 
So I've got all four sides and again when I'm pressing them, I am pressing them out towards the yellow. So now before you go any farther, you've got the first of the four done. But you need to make sure that it is measured at six and a half by six and a half inch. So what you're going to do is line up your ruler and let's see. Well, it's not, it's not quite, it's a little bit wider than six and a half. So I want to make sure I'm trimming from both sides and that my diagonal is kind of going across. So, because I'm just looking from here to here. I'm not worrying about this side here. So I'll just kind of trim that off. And I'm going to rotate it all the way around. Line up my six and a half back over here. And then I've got a little bit over here to trim off. So I'm doing both. Then I'll rotate it one quarter this time and make sure that I've got six and a half inches that way. So both sides are good. So now my block is six and a half inch by six and a half inch. You don't need me to do four of these, but you want two in this color scheme. So you'll have two identical. And then you will do it in the opposite, your other colors, with the yellow in my case in the middle and the blues around the outside edges. And I will just do it the exact same step. Press one on each side, then on the other two sides, then square it up, and then do the other set. Like I said, once you've done one and you know that your measurements are right and your seam allowances are good, then you can go ahead and finish the one, then do all three kind of together. So basically, this next step, I will just do a yellow, so blue to it and so blue to this one. And then I can go ahead and then I can do the other sides of them and then press them and then add the other two sides to those. So I'll go ahead and put these two pieces together and then we'll show you the final assembly. Okay, so I've got all four of the pieces sewn together. We've got two with the teal in the middle, yellow outside, two with the yellow in the middle and the teal on the outside. And we're just gonna arrange them in the order that we want them to be. So I've got my yellow centers opposite of my each other and my teal is opposite of each other. And so the next thing we're going to do, just fold these over and we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance between both sets here. Okay, so I've got them sewn together, the two sets here. And I've gone ahead and pressed them towards the teal just so that I can nest my seams. So now I'm just going to fold these two together and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance down the side here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've sewn those together and I've gone ahead and pressed them. And so I, you have, I have now completed the Rob Peter to Pay Paul Quilting Block of the Month for August of 2020 for Quilting Block of the Month Facebook group. And you kind of start to see where the curves are starting to turn in there. If you add another row to it, you can kind of see it even a little bit more on the circles to where they're starting to form. And so it depends on how many blocks you want to put together. You can make a whole quilt out of it. Um, make sure that you take a picture of your block and post it on our Facebook group so we can see everybody's combinations and how everybody's blocks look. So thank you again for joining us for this additional block for August of 2020.